Okay, so we're going to discuss today about the remaining topics in your intestinal fluke, in your flux. So we have here the intestinal flux. Okay, so the intestinal flux that we'll be discussing is about will be all about here the following: the genus Fasciolopsis. We have also here the Kinostoma. Then we have Heterophyes, and we have also here the Metagonyms. Okay, um, correction. With the last discussion, the genus Fasciola, Opistorchis, Conorchis, actually belongs to your uh, liver and bile flux. Actually, they are not blood flux. So, I need make correction for that. Okay, for the basic life cycle of your entire intestinal flux, so you get infected by intestinal flux here by ingestion of the a metasarcaria found in the second intermediate host. The second intermediate host could be a fish, it could be a water vegetation. So in that, you can find here the encysted metasarcaria and you get infected by that by ingestion. So if you try to ingest the second intermediate host having the metasarcaria, metasarcaria go to your mouth, esophagus, and your stomach. Or try to exist to become here your, develop to become adult, and eventually try to inhabit here your gastrointestinal tract, making this one as your intestinal flux. However, in some cases of your uh, intestinal flux, just in a case, for example, of your heterophyus, heterophyus, it could migrate to other part of your body. It could go to your heart, it could migrate to your CNS. But some other intestinal flux, their infection is just limited on the gastrointestinal tract. From there, the adult worm try to lay egg because again the adult worm is a hermaphrodite. They try to lay egg, the egg could be embryonated already or segmented or matured. Other eggs here on the ovary position or laying is not mature or not embryonated. So we'll classify that later on. So for those when speak about embryonated or, or matured, so the egg already have the mirosidium ready to hatch upon contact with the water. Others wherein their egg is not yet embryonated or unsegmented, so it requires some time for egg then to embryonate in the water. Once it tried to become mature, so it tried to hatch and try to liberate here the mirosidium. Okay, mirosidium again is a ciliated larva. It tried to swim and try to find here the suitable first intermediate host that may be the genus here of your snail. So inside the body of a snail, this merosidium will try to develop to become your sporosis, developing that one to become regia, and eventually cercaria. After that one, the cercaria leaves the body of your snail, and try to swim again in the water, and try to find here the suitable second intermediate host, where the cercaria within your suitable second intermediate host try to encyst to become the metacercaria, making that one as the infective stage. And then the cycle goes on. Okay, so we discussed first here your Fasciolopsis boschi. Okay, Fasciolopsis boschi, other name for this one is this your oriental intestinal fluke or your giant intestinal fluke. Okay, so the first intermediate host will be the snail. Again, again all the intermediate hosts are snails. So for this one, it includes here the snail belonging to your genus, Gyrulus, Segmentina, and we have also here the Hypiotis. For the second intermediate host, which are include here your water vegetations, it includes your water crest, water um, hyacinth, you could also water caltrops, you could also have here the water pump. Okay, for the morphology, so the adult worm, okay, so this one would have thick and fleshy characteristics, and it will have here characterized by the absence of the cephalic cone in the shoulders. And that would have you characterized by larger ventral sucker compared to its oral sucker. And they try to lie next to one another. And they have also here the simple intestinal seca with their testes described here as highly dendritic in tandem formation. Okay, for the ova, this is still a percolated ova. And it will have here characteristic operculum. And this one is... Basically, upon ovary position, this is immature or unsegmented, unembryonated. You to see, the ova here, there's no yet 
mirosidium inside requires it to embryonate still the water for the, before the mirosidium here to, to hatch. Okay, so for this one, for the ova, so again, this one would resemble here your fasciola hepatica, only that is much larger compared to your fasciola hepatica. Both of them, fasciola hepatica and fasciola spusky, are unembryonated or unsegmented or immature in laying or during laying or oviposition. Okay, for the pathology, so this is intestinal look, so therefore try to cause here some intestinal manifestation like diarrhea. It's also try to cause here some heavy infection in the form of your edema, in the form of your anasarca, ascites. This is accumulation of your ascitic fluid in the gastrointestinal tract. So, lumalaki ang chan ng patient because of too much water on that. And we have also here inflammation at the site of the intestinal tract because of the attachment of your adult worm in that because it's, that's its, its final habitat. And could also result here to urine stasis or intestinal stasis or blockage in your intestinal tract because the worm might eventually try to clog or block in your in intestinal tract and therefore try to cause here your intestinal stasis. Okay, the next one we have here echinostoma ilocanum. So from the words of ilocanum, so this one has been identified here in our country in the Locos region. So, the word echino, echinostoma, echo, which means spines, and stoma here, which means mouth. So, you are expecting here that the mouth part of this adult worm, most likely contained here the spines. Spines making that one as your echinostoma. Other name for that is your garrison's flu. So, try to, oh, it's being called also here as your fascioleta elocanum. Okay, the first intermediate host for this one is still your snail. Specifically, we have your gyrulus convexus culus. And we have also Habutis, Hybutis, Umbilicalis. For the second intermediate host, we have here the Kuhol. So that's your Pila Luzonica. Again, you get infected still by the Metasarcaria because this one would have here two intermediate hosts. Okay, for the pathology, okay, the adult worm here is characterized by peri it's lancet in it's lancet in shape. It's uh, tapered anterior, rounded posterior. And characterized by the presence of your circumoral, circumoval this, oral circumoval this, surrounded by a crowns or collarets, collarets approximately containing here 49 to 51 spines, making this one your echinostoma. It's also identified here having a dumbbell testis in tandem, and we have also here a very simple intestinal seca. For the egg, it is still operculated. It's also unembryonated on the oviposition or unsegmented. Okay, and then the operculum here would have characteristic tiny dot appearance. Okay, for the pathology, since this one is gastrointestinal tract, try to cause here diarrhea. And the chronic inflammation, it could cause here some other infections like dysentery, epigastric pain, or toxemia. And it might result also here to intoxication at intestinal tract where the adult worm tried to attach because, again, that's their final habitat. Okay, the next one we have here heterophagies. Heterophagies, other name for that is your von Schiebold fluke. Try to cause here heterophid infection. Or I call it one. Also, try to cause here your cardiac heterophidiasis infections. Okay, the primary intermediate host is a snail, which is your fresh and brackish water snail. This includes here your Pyronilla, Pyronilla conica, and we have also here the Serifidia uh, cingulata. On the other hand, the second intermediate host here would be your fish. This is your fresh and salt water fish, which includes here your tilapia, your mugil, and we have also here your acanthogopius. Okay, for the morphology, so we have adult worm is periform, and this is characterized here by the presence of your third sucker. We call it once your genital or your gonotile, responsible here for its deadliest manifestation. It's deadliest because it's one because of their third shot, because it is that aside from this is the the smallest. And therefore, it could penetrate here in our cardiac myocardium of your heart. And therefore, it could try to affect your heart. And eventually, that's result here to your cardiac infection. And that's highly fatal. 
Okay, then a cuticle here, try to cover the integuments. The entire body is being having a characteristic as, as um, a fine like spine uh, integuments. Another one, it would have the large central sucker found on the anterior middle line of the body. Okay, for the ova, this is operculated. And this one is embryonated or segmented. I mean to say this is matured in the ovary position. So I mean to say, upon ovary position, there's already mirror syndrome inside. This is ready to hatch already. And this one is operculated. And the operculum side would have your characteristic, a slight shouldered appearance. On the opposite end would have your the broad ends with indistinct opercular rim with um, less developed posterior spines. Okay, for the pathology, so again, this one is your intestinal block where you could migrate from your intestinal tract and go to other parts of your body. You could go to your heart. Once it tried to go to your heart because it, because of its size, very small, it tried to cause your try to provoke inflammatory reaction in your heart and that's result here to your cardiac beriberi or your cardiac heterophagists. And then again, heart manifestation is the deadliest or the, the dead end of the infections. And therefore, the patient die with that. And another one, the parasite could also migrate to other parts of your body. It could migrate to the brain, try to cause cerebral hemorrhage. And the parasite could also go to the spinal cord where inflammation infection in that area results to your uh, sensory and motor loss in function. Okay, and another one, we have here your Metagonimus Yukogawai. Another name for that one is your Japanese Fluke. Another one for, another, another name for that is your Heterophyus Yukogawai or Loxotrema ovato. The first intermediate host also here, the snail, this includes your Semisol Cospira Libertine, and we have also the Fiara. The second intermediate host will be your Cryptomoid Fish or Salmonoid, Salmonoid Fish, Salmonoid. So we have your Delapia and even your Mugil. Okay, for the morphology, it would also have the piriform shape, just like your heterophyes. And this would be characterized here by a rounded anterior, tapered posterior, with the presence of large ventral sucker compared to its oral sucker, and that ventral sucker that try to lie next to its genital opening. Okay, the ova is operculated. And that one is embryonated, just like your heterophyes, heterophyes. And that would have your, on the other hand, it's thin shell. And the operculum would have your characteristic nodular thickening appearance. And would have your less distinct opercular groups. So for the pathology, since one is your intestinal fluke, it also try to cause here your gastrointestinal tract infection in the form of granulomatous lesion. Okay, so this is the end for all the topics in our trematos or your flukes. Okay, thank you.